Yeah, well, speaking of, that's a perfect segue. Uh, so this is, we're wrapping up the end of the first phase. I mean, this conference is going on all weekend. There's a million other tracks. We'll talk about that at, at the at the top of the show or the end of the show. But we're kind of coming to the close of the 24-hour nonstop virtual event. Um, the team who put this together knew as soon as uh, as it became clear that New York Blockchain Week and, and Consensus were going to have to shift, that they were going to have to reimagine something. So to wrap this up, I'm joined by Jun Ian Wong who is one of the lead producers on this event, who's been with Consensus for a long time, uh, doing this event, thinking through this event. And I, I want to uh, actually kind of just get into how, I want to put this in historical perspective, basically. So June, let's go back to the beginning. What were the first Coindesk Consensus events that, that you worked on? And maybe how did it even come about uh, as an institution? Yeah, sure. So, you know, um, we started Consensus back in 2015, which makes it this year the sixth edition. Um, although it feels far longer than that, I guess, you know, crypto time is, is, is much quicker than human human time. Um, we started in 2015, you know, really on a shoestring. Um, you'll recall that the Bitcoin, that was the year Bitcoin had a big run up and, and a subsequent run down. And so, you know, the markets were not very frothy and there wasn't actually that much um, interest or hype uh, around cryptocurrencies, right? This was one of those times when, you know, again, the, the obituary for Bitcoin was being written. Um, and so we really did it as a response to the fact that um, up until that point, there, there had been a big annual conference put on by the Bitcoin Foundation. Um, and that year there, there wasn't one. Um, and so we really tried to fill that gap a little bit and we thought, how can we create a platform for people to meet um, that reflects the diversity of fields that uh, cryptocurrency and, and blockchain is, right? Um, it's not enough to just get, you know, say software developers in a room. You have to get the software developers and the economists uh, and, the, and the whales uh, and the day traders, all, all of these people, the regulators, um, all of these people in the room for this thing to really work. Um, and so that was that was the thinking behind the first consensus. Um, and and it turned out that that people were looking for this kind of uh, diverse space. Um, and it turned out that Coindesk was the the entity that could convene all of these different uh, very hard to convene groups. So uh, take us through, I know uh, the events grew in size precipitously alongside the industry. 2018 was crazy, right? Uh, I mean, that was notable. That's where a lot of people uh, started kind of had their first consensus experience. It's one of the craziest, most overcrowded, overwhelming, but really exciting things ever. Was that a, a high point, a low point, or a both on the, on the consensus journey? So I'll caveat that by saying, so I started Consensus back in 2015, but um, 2018, I attended it as an attendee, right? Uh, I had left mm -hmm. Coindesk. Uh, I was a reporter uh, with Quartz. I attended that like any normal attendee. Um, you know, fr from my perspective that year, I thought it was kind of the perfect um, encapsulation of the industry, mm -hmm. right? It was a perfect proxy for what was going on in the markets, how people viewed um, the whole uh, the whole space, um, it was crazy, it was wild, you know, people were were parking Lambos outside, um, you know, in my view, it was it was a highlight, really. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's a great way to put it. Okay, so uh, when you think about, uh, when you when you guys switched to this move to virtual, what was most important to preserve about the offline experience versus what had to be rethought? Yeah, you know, I, I'm just thinking back to the sh soft money show I, I hosted earlier with, with Annalise Milano, and we were talking about a lot of these issues, right? Um, you know, what makes money money? This is a multi-century, multi-thousands of years um, debate, right? Um, is, is money valuable because of the thing it is made of, right? The, 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 the metal ore that is dug out of the ground, like gold, um, or is it valuable because of the credit value, credit value theory of money, which says uh, it's as good as you know, the other person's word, right? Um, and I think this is where events in particular, um, and in our industry in particular, uh, play such a pivotal role, because um, what is a new form of money except for the social consensus uh, around what that new form of money should be, right? 
um, you know, in 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 the in the nineteenth century, um, people like John Stuart Mill talked about the veil of money, right? Which is this notion that money is really a neutral thing, um, which hides the true economic activity of uh, people bartering and exchanging goods and services. Um, and then down, down the line, people thought, well, actually maybe money isn't that neutral. Like, you know, money has its own agency, right? And this is the notion that people like Robert Schiller say, put in place, which I think you'll agree with, this notion of narrative economics. Um, contagious ideas are the things that cause uh, economic activity, right? It's not just some kind of rational calculation of this or that. Um, and so putting all of those things in the context, money is a, is a deeply social activity um, and conferences are, you know, one manifestation of this attempt for everyone to agree on what this money thing is. So for us really, Th this this social dimension, you know, this sort of shelling point for the industry was was critical, right? We needed to make a thing that was big enough to be seen across the internet, and big enough that uh, lots of people could convene, coalesce, and and try and form some kind of consensus based on you know Brownian motion. Well, listen, I you know I've had a, a, a front row seat to a lot of the production, and seeing you guys shift into this different model has been incredibly impressive. Kudos to you, to Joanne Poe, to Michael Casey, Nolan Bowerly, Dasha, Aaron Stanley, Bailey Reutzel, uh, Lauren Lano, so many people on the team who who figured out how to shift this. And I want to make sure that people understand as we wrap up this uh, special breakdown session that there is uh, consensus distributed is been going on programming throughout the week. Uh, you can go to the CoinDesk homepage and to the uh, uh, up to the top to the events button. You can register and once you're in Brella, you can go through a, a huge array of content. There's something like 112 sessions going on between now and Friday. Uh, you can find discussions about protocol developments in the foundations track. You can watch panels on investing in the markets track. You can get technical instruction in the unlock track. So uh, a huge number of different things to extend your consensus experience. Um, and even more, there's online workshops and programming for partners. Uh, uh, the World Economic Forum, the IEEE, the Oxford University. So, uh, and I guess the last piece is there's actually even networking through through this platform. So, uh, you guys have left no detail unturned. I'm super impressed. And uh, June, thanks so much for hanging out. And to the whole team again, congrats. Thanks so much, Nathaniel. If I may also call out uh, the great work of uh, Stephanie, Rio, and Peter Boards, uh, helping to keep the trains running on time behind the scenes. Yeah, it's, uh, we need a we need a, an extra show just for the the list of people who made this possible. So thank you to all of them, the ones mentioned and not.